My name is Kathy, and I work at an office as a clerical worker. I am 40 years old. I was living with my three-year-old spouse Bob, who also works for the same company, but we don't have kids. Since I got married at the age of 30, we have been married for 10 years. There was an immediate sense of urgency in me to have a family. We were both hoping to have kids. Despite the fact that my spouse hardly has a biological clock, I believe that 35 was my upper limit as a man. Since I'm not physically strong, I wanted to use my energies to get through childbirth and motherhood as soon as possible. But my wish was not fulfilled. Right after our wedding, Bob and I began trying to conceive, but there were no symptoms of pregnancy. Thus, we made the decision to visit an obstetrics and gynecology clinic for testing. The findings indicated that I had a few issues that complicated my ability to conceive. Not that I couldn't get pregnant at all, but I was informed it would be challenging and the chances were slim. Can't I become a father? Bob remarked, saddened. There was nothing I could say, seeing him like that. With a faint hope, we kept trying for a kid, but in the end, none came to us. I tried telling my dejected husband that it wasn't the end of the world. Together, let's enjoy our life as a partnership. Yeah, there's nothing we can do about it, so I guess just go with the flow, he said, sounding resigned as well. But over time, Bob started to transform. He used to sigh and remark, if I had a kid, I wonder if I would be enjoying a family outing like that on my weekends, whenever we were strolling about town and spotted a family with kids. He used to remark, you're so lucky to have kids, and look envious when we were invited to a co-worker's house and saw their kids. It made me uneasy to worry whether he couldn't, deep down, give up on having a child. Then Bob started acting distant from me. He had been so helpful in helping out around the house when we were trying to become pregnant, warning me not to do too much as it would interfere with my chances of getting pregnant. When something big needed to be lifted, he was the first to offer to carry that, and he was a kind husband who looked out for me. He would constantly take over the domestic duties on the weekends, claiming that I take care of them during the week. But he stopped trying anything as soon as he realized I couldn't become a mother. I'm tired, and housework is a wife's job, right? After that, he merely lazes around on the weekends. Either he was dozing off or fiddling with his phone. All of a sudden, I had more work to complete, and my health started to decline. He would remark, I don't know, do it yourself, and not even try to help me when I had a fever or stomach ache. Since it was true that I was the reason it was difficult for us to conceive, I was unable to respond to him. I pondered whether or not to file for divorce. Bob was transferred right when I thought everything was going great. It seems that he was selected for a significant project at one of the connected businesses. He had to move for job because the subsidiary was located on the other side of the state. Naturally, I assumed I had to accompany him, but he added, you're not required to attend. I'm going to travel alone. After hearing those remarks, I paused to reflect. Perhaps he was simply angry and indifferent to me since I was unable to conceive. Maybe a little time apart will help him get over his feelings, and our quiet friendship can resume. I nodded and said, okay, I'll remain here. Be careful. After his transfer, I said him farewell. He would only come home around once a month. He would quickly claim he was busy and had to return, even when he did arrive back. That was normal, but even though it was only for a brief visit, I was glad to see him since I knew he wouldn't stick around if he didn't like me. Bob started to slowly transform when he went alone. He was the same as usual at first, but with time he softened. He would say, I bought something for you, while he brought me trinkets. Have fun. Or he would, in spite of his busy schedule, accompany me shopping. He would ask, is there anything troubling you, to see how I was doing? I honestly believed that he had been his usual sweet self again. Although he was only supposed to be working there for a year, he ended up remaining for two. The project's timeline was far behind schedule. 
He stopped talking about me not being able to have kids by the time the second year of his assignment rolled around. Rather, he stated, we couldn't have children together, but I've given up on it, when he saw families in the town with kids. Hearing that he had given up relieved me. He came home to me after finishing his work assignment two years later. Good to see you again. You must be worn out. I'm at my house. At last, we are able to coexist. We got back to cohabiting with such serene conversations. But those quiet days were over before long. When he came back, he told me something. One of the young girls in my family got married and had a baby before that. She claims that because she is too young, she cannot raise it by herself. Are you okay with us taking the child under our wing? Abruptly, he made a proposal. I questioned, what's going on, surprised by the abrupt proposal, and he replied, we couldn't have a child, after all. I propose that we take in and raise this child as our own. I answered, let me think about it, and ended the call since I was so taken aback by the unexpected turn of events. But something about his story seemed strange to me. His parents weren't in constant communication with us, and his family resided far away. We were so far apart that we hardly ever exchanged Christmas cards. I didn't know his family well because we didn't have a wedding ceremony. I told Bob, hesitant to adopt a child from someone I barely knew, is it possible for me to meet the child's parents? I would like to know their character. He vehemently objected, stating, why is it important who the parents are? Why does that pique your interest so much? I believe that knowing the parents' identities is crucial. I want to know all the specific reasons why they are unable to raise the child, starting with the father's story. He became agitated and stated, the father ran away, when I pressed him. I was told. Give up prying into the parents' lives. When advised that you should adopt a stranger's child out of the blue, you don't just answer, sure, why not? How in the world are you thinking? I felt compelled to reply in a stern manner. He then yelled, enough. We can no longer work together if you decline to take the child in. Leave immediately. Those remarks gave me the impression that I had heard his actual intentions. Whatever the cost, he wanted a child. He didn't care that I was here. That's what I started to think. I also thought I was at my breaking point. All right, I'll gather my things and leave. After that, I hurriedly packed up my things and departed from our house that day. I took refuge in a motel close to the train station because I had nowhere else to go. My husband's divorce proceedings proceeded without a hitch. We used legal counsel to address all of the concerns so that there would be no disagreements later on. Property partition, alimony, and other difficulties were resolved amicably. I quit and looked for a new job since I felt uncomfortable working for the same firm as him. I was able to secure employment at a small law office since I was certified as an administrative assistant and possessed strong computer skills. It took me some time to get used to my new work environment, but I was able to work every day and have a calm existence anyway. After two years of living apart from my spouse, I had grown accustomed to returning home to an empty room. After a year or so of this life, my ex-husband showed up at work one day carrying a small child. Why are you here? He cried upon seeing me at the reception. He was taken aback. Why am I not present here? Here, I am employed. I mean, it's evident, right? The moment he heard this, his face went white. He was holding a youngster, and I was curious about that, but first I brought him to my supervising attorney. I discovered a startling fact there. Sir, I've been thinking that this one-year-old child doesn't look anything like me. I don't think it's truly mine. He stated. I see. What are your plans if it turns out not to be your child? Of course, I'll divorce my wife, but according to the law, you may only contest the child's paternity up to a year after the child is born. You would still be required to pay child support even if a DNA test revealed the child was not yours. What? You have to be kidding. 
I'm not. The Supreme Court has also established precedents of this kind. As a clerk, I was transcribing their talk when it occurred to me. He had cheated on us and fathered a child throughout our marriage. It was evident that the child was conceived approximately a year following his business travel, based on the child's age and the length of the pregnancy. Subsequently, I recalled that he had shown me extraordinary kindness ever since. It occurred to me that he might have felt bad. His present spouse appeared to be his colleague from a previous job. Every time he gave me an explanation, his face would get pale. It made sense, there was his former spouse, whom he had attempted to elude with the child from his extramarital affair, just a year prior. Finally, he said, okay, let me take a DNA test first and then think about it. With these last remarks, he turned to walk away. I disclosed my divorce from last year to Mr. Williams, my attorney. Mr. Williams was taken aback when my ex-husband came back at the end of the day and inquired, you know you can claim alimony for infidelity within two years of discovery? What are your plans? Of course I want it, I replied. I also wish to take it from his mistress. All right, let's get the processes underway straight away. Many thanks for it. Ultimately, I made alimony claims against my ex-husband and his lover, his current wife, through my attorney, Mr. Williams. I mailed the claim not only to their residence but also to their places of employment and his in-law's residence in order to keep them from avoiding it. Then my ex-husband called me immediately. What exactly is this assertion about? It's an infidelity-related alimony claim. I'm not going to pay alimony because you're already divorced. That is untrue. After infidelity is discovered, you have two years to file for alimony. Your infidelity was discovered after our divorce last year, therefore it's still within the claim period. Then a voice I didn't recognize urged him to adjust, and she picked up the phone. Hello, what's with this claim? Her abrupt outburst caught me off guard, so I said, who am I speaking with? She answered, I'm his spouse. Return at least my portion of this assertion. However, it seems sense for me to ask for alimony after being duped. He claimed to be single, so pay attention. I went out with him because I believed he was unmarried. I was unaware that he was married at the time. It is not important to me. It doesn't negate the fact that you had an affair with my husband, even if he lied about being single. I'll take all of your nice $20,000 back. As they get older, our child will require money. There's no way we can afford such a huge amount of $40,000. That is not an issue for me. He has a respectably high position and you both work, so I don't think there's a money problem. You know, he received a wage reduction and a demob because you sent that allegation. My salary decreased after I was demoted from a full-time position to a part-time one. We're not able to afford to pay that much money, she sobbed. Ask your parents to pay for it, then. I will not back down in the slightest, and I will not pay. She yelled, and he returned to the phone. As my wife put it, we are going to face some financial challenges. Would you kindly withdraw the claim? No, I'm not going to give up on it. Let me tell you something positive, by the way. What's that, since we're at it? I asked him. Do you remember we had a fertility test a few years ago? Yes, indeed, we did. Even so, it became apparent that I was having issues. Actually, the test results show that you also had a problem. What? I take it you're kidding. It is accurate. While it's true that I had an issue, you also did. I kept it a secret at the time because I was stunned and didn't want to harm you. The test results paper is still with me. Do you want it sent to you by me? I said that, and he murmured, it's not true. It is untrue. Most likely, the shock had made him forget about everything else. In all honesty, the doctor at the time did mention that there was a serious problem with me, but my husband Bob also had his share of issues. It might be difficult to have a child because both of you have issues, the doctor informed me. Kathy, 
It's not simply a problem for you. Bob was so surprised to learn that there was an issue on my end that he left the doctor's office before getting the full explanation. I was going to keep this a secret, but I told him because I felt there was no longer any reason to keep it a secret. He whispered, that's a lie, just now. That is unquestionably false. All right, let's leave it at that, I said to him. I said, I'm busy, and hung up. After that, I was able to obtain from them a total of $40,000, or precisely $20,000 for mental suffering from each of them. Bob appears to have borne the full cost as she declined to pay. It turns out that Bob did take the child's DNA after all. Just as he had feared, it turns out that the child is not his. It appears that he is thinking of ending his marriage to his wife, but he feels compelled to stay in his reluctant marriage to his current wife, who was his lover, because he will have to pay child support and emotional anguish compensation to her. It turns out that he wanted me to raise his child with his affair partner since she is a strong-willed lady, even though he doesn't even have the financial flexibility because of his demotion. When he arrived to pay the emotional distress compensation, he admitted to me that he had planned to find a reason to end their relationship if he was granted custody of the child. His wife and he have not been getting along lately, and things are tight at home. He seems to be struggling, and they are looked down upon at work as the adulterous couple. For my part, I've become accustomed to living a quiet, single existence. During the upcoming extended weekend, I intend to travel with several pals. Even though I'm by myself now, working and hanging out with pals make my days worthwhile.